Hi, everyone. This is Karen Newman, and this is the Saturday Hukala webinar. Uh, we'd like to welcome you. Uh, today, channeling for us, we have Jonathan C. Martin. And before we start, I'm just going to introduce who's in the room as well as uh, do a couple of announcements. Um, in the room today, we have Salish, Jonathan, myself. Um, we have Alex on the controls, Hamd Kuman on, uh, <laughs> he's also in the room, and then we have Christine. And then for the announcements, uh, we have a holiday special for the next Sedona workshop, which will be February 1st through the 2nd. Um, the special is that if you pay $278 now, then you can pay the $278 balance when you get there. The entire uh, the entire workshop is uh, two, two payments of $278, one due now and one due on your arrival. And uh, at the uh, Ascension workshop, you will have uh, Max, you will have uh, Jim Charles teaching, you will have Jonathan C. Martin, who's going to be channeling today, he's going to be a special guest. Uh, there will be Galactic Reiki, which will be taught by Chakur, and then of course one of our very favorites, Grendel, will definitely be there. So please go to hukalo.org. Also, if you would like to join Hukalo and have a chance to be in the room um, during Jim Charles's chain, uh, channelings, you can ask questions yourself. Then you just also go to hukalo.org and you can join for $10 a month and you're guaranteed a place in the room. So I'd like to welcome Jonathan C. Martin. Hi, how are you? Hi, hey everyone. Hi. Hi. So for the people that don't know you, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, um, do any announcements that you want and, and we'll just, I'll just leave it with you then. Yes, thank you, Karen. So, yeah, I'm Jonathan Martin. I'm a channel for the Yael predominantly. Um, I I do private sessions as well. So, if you want a private session, you can get them on my my website. I also teach channeling. I love teaching channeling, and I also I channel people's guides. If you have like your own guide, I channel your guide for you. So, I can also do that. You can, everything I do, you can check it out on my website. It's jonathancmartin.com, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-C-M-A-R-T-I-N.com. You can also find me on YouTube under Jonathan C. Martin and on Facebook if you do a search for me. I um, I add anyone who's interested in, um... yeah, that's about it. All right. Well, we're ready to um, have you do what you do and, and – uh... Just let us know and we'll be here for you. Okay, great, thank you, Karen. So, yeah, so I'll just take a few minutes to get into the channeling state and then most likely the Yael will come through. Sometimes if there's someone specific that wants to come through, someone else will come through if it's relevant, but I usually channel the Yael. And yeah, they'll, not, they'll probably do a quick announcement, they'll probably do a quick introduction or share whatever they wish to share. Then we can open up to questions and answers. So, thank you. Okay, are there any questions that you that you prefer or, or is there types of information that you prefer to give versus others? Is there anything we should know about your channeling? Um, I always say any questions are welcome. The, the Yael always invite any questions at all. And um, yeah, so leave Okay, it perfect. Up. All right, well, we'll see you when you get back and thank you again for being here.
Hello, Shivai. Good day. Welcome. We are the Ayel. Hello. Hello, Hokolo. Hello, Earth. Hello, human colony. Hello, world. Hello. Uh, Ow. Hello and welcome. Hello. Namaste. Hello. Hello. Namaste. Welcome. Glad to make Thank your you. acquaintance. Nice to meet you as well. Thank you. And nice to meet you as well. So, if we may, share a short message. A short welcoming into our energy, our frequency, our domain of existence at this timing in your world. The idea of who we are, why we are here, what information we come to share with your realm, our purpose, our calling, our excitement, and our realm of understanding of infinite consciousness and our perspective of the infinite creator in form, realizing moving blending in this world in this reality at this timing this reality we call planet earth for we are around your planet we are around your star your soul our system we come at this timing to share to impart our wisdom our aspect of knowledge our corner of universal intelligence with your civilization for the purpose are awakening from your slumber, from your idea, your identification as a mind-body organism in a separate hostile world, separate from creation. We come to remind you that you are not separate at all. You are one with the creator. You are one with all of creation. You are all of creation. You are pure consciousness, pure awareness. You are forming your own reality at this timing within your own consciousness. This experience you see before you now, the channel sharing our words before you through your monitor, your TV screen, your handsets, is all in a sense illusory. While we do not wish to suggest it is not real for the experience of consciousness, the spirit experience of creation is very real. And in a sense, it is all that is real. Experience is the only reality. An experience is you. Experience exists within you as an aspect of your consciousness, as an aspect of your creatorhood. For the infinite beings that you are, the infinite consciousness, the infinite awareness that you are, creates moment to moment within your consciousness. Whatever it is, is most relevant for you to experience in that moment. For you are, in a sense, always getting what you need, perhaps not what you want from your physical mind, third density perspective, but from your higher mind, your higher understanding of who you are, your true creator, your true, cre your true nature, you're always creating within your consciousness exactly what you need, moment to moment, for your own expansion, for your own acceleration, for your own continued understanding of your corner of creation, your creator within the creator's consciousness, that which you choose to experience, for you came here, you came to planet Earth at this time for an accelerated path of spiritual awakening, an accelerated spiritual journey. The idea is, from our perspective, that Earth is somewhat a master class. Earth is somewhat an accelerated place for the idea of spiritual expansion. There are few places in creation due to the contrast between darkness and light that exists parallel to one another at this timing. There are few places in creation that poses, that arises and gives such potential for such accelerated growth, for the idea of the catalyst you experience in the form of darkness, limitation, those vibrations you say you do not prefer, have been chosen by you from your higher perspective for the purpose of accelerating you, springboarding you into a new golden age of love and light and co-creativity on your earth. So these experiences you say you do not prefer, if you are experiencing them, 
the idea is that from some level, from a higher level, you do prefer because you have chosen to create them for yourself for the idea of your own expansion, your own acceleration, your own growth. So with this understanding and our compassion and understanding that you are going through, many of you, much pain at this time, much suffering, most much emotional transmutation. And we, and we stress, we highlight, we give essence to the word transmutation. But the idea is that bringing to the mantle, bringing into your consciousness these ideas of emotional pain, emotional suffering, gives you the perspective, gives you the allowance to see that these perspectives which you have defined as loss, of suffering, as grief, can be redefined. And this is the idea, really, of this spiritual expansion you are going through on your planet at this timing. The idea of bringing to your awareness those ideas of things that you say you do not prefer, things that you say cause you pain, cause you grief, cause you loss, cause you emotional disheartenments. The idea is that no experience can really bring you any negative emotion unless you say it can. For you, you are the creators of your own world. And in a sense, nothing has inbuilt meaning. All circumstances, all situations are neutral. Neutral aspects of your own consciousness. And this is the idea of oneness. This is the idea of what may have been turned in some of your Eastern traditions as non-duality. The idea of coming to see that all experiences are really just fragments, aspects of your own consciousness. You're projected into the mirror of your reality in front of you for the purpose of learning and growing. And in essence, they have no inbuilt meaning. In essence, they have no inbuilt emotion, feeling, sense, causality, structure, other than what you give them. For you are the creators of your own reality. And the idea of these things that you say make you unhappy, they say lower your vibration, is really an opportunity to see that you have the choice to choose whether they lower your vibration or not. These circumstances that you do not prefer, and we understand there is much pain and loss and suffering on your earth, and we come here to help you accelerate, transmute, and transform it into a new golden age of love and light, and we hold much compassion. We do not wish to devalue or undervalue the suffering that is going on your planet, but you have the opportunity to transmute it through the acceleration of your own consciousness into the understanding that you can see things in the way God sees things. You can see things in the way creation sees things. You can see things from a higher perspective, that all things are beautiful in the eyes of God. All things are beautiful from your true perspective, from your true perspective of creation. For they are an aspect of creation. They are an aspect of all that is. They are an aspect of oneness. For the state of oneness in which many of you are coming to associate with, the connectivity, that state of unification with all of creation, gives rise to a beautiful sense of belonging, a beautiful sense of knowing that you are all of creation. And all these aspects of darkness are merely an aspect of you. And when you see them in this way, when you bring them into the light of your own being, you can redefine them. You can see them in a way that can assist in their own transmutation. For when you stop judging them negatively, for when you stop pushing them away and resisting them and see that they are an aspect of you, to be integrated into your being so you can attain the state of oneness, so you can remember your natural state of oneness. These experiences are offering up that opportunity to you. And this is the, really the idea of the shifting of the darkness into the light. When you begin to embrace these aspects of yourself that you say you do not prefer, when you begin to accept their reality, see that they are part of you and they have served you and they have come to teach you a lesson. They have come to give you the opportunity to grow. It is this aspect, this understanding, this seeing that these aspects of you that you say you do not prefer have been chosen by you. They are exactly what you have chosen for yourself to accelerate your planet into a new age. You are bringing the darkness out of hiding into the light. This is why your planet is going through so much turmoil at this time. It's about getting it out on your plate. It's about seeing these aspects of yourself that you do not prefer, seeing that they are merely you, loving them for what they are, no longer resisting them, accepting them. And from this place, you are no longer putting a negative spin on them. You are no longer energizing them with your consciousness. But when you try to push away those things you say you do not prefer, 
You are, in a sense, putting a spin on them. You are energizing them. You are giving a resonance to them that is actually attracting them towards you. And this is why many of you get stuck in these patterns over and over again of experiencing these things you don't prefer because you're trying to push them away. You are trying to resist them. And this is giving an energetic spin to them which keeps bringing them back to you. So the idea is to come to the understanding of oneness, come to the compassion and love and see that they are an aspect of you, an aspect of your greater self and accept them and validate them and say to them, you have a valid reality. I see that you serve a purpose in creation. I accept your reality as a part of the infinite creator, as a part of the one beautiful creation of all that is. And from this place of validation, you can choose to no longer create, to see while it is a valid experience, this suffering, this pain, this heartache that is experienced on planet Earth at this time. You can choose otherwise once you stop resisting, once you stop putting this negative charge on it that keeps recreating it in your reality. And once you integrate, and once you learn to love all unconditionally, unconditionally love yourselves, unconditionally love all your fellow humans, whether you label them as dark or light, unconditional love is the key. As you come to unconditionally love the entirety of creation and validate it for what it is, a beautiful part of the infinite creator, you give yourselves the opportunity to choose otherwise. You give yourselves the opportunity to choose what you prefer. You give yourselves the opportunity to choose the light. For you're no longer resisting the darkness. You are no longer giving energy to it. You are no longer bringing its essence into your reality through resistance. You're accepting it. You are validating it. But you are saying, I see you. I validate you. I love you unconditionally. But I am choosing otherwise. This is no longer who I am. I am moving to the light. We are going to create a new fourth density golden age of love and light on this civilization, on this planet, at this timing. And with this essence, with this energy, you can rapidly transmute your world. You can rapidly transmute your civilization. You can rapidly bring your consciousness to a new level of understanding, of compassion, of well-being, and co-creativity that will radically transform your world, that will accelerate your timelines, that will shift you to a new world that you say you Earth humans prefer. And we are here with you to co-create with you and assist with you in this transmutation, in this acceleration of your own consciousness at this time for the purpose of transforming, transforming your life your world, your energetic system, this creation we are co-creating together into the dream golden age we prefer and we are accelerating into. So at this time, with this sharing, we would like to open up this transmutation, this transmission to the idea of question and answers. So please proceed with your question and answer modality. Thank you very much. Um, the first question we have is from Christy. Greetings and blessings. Well, you answered the <laughs> you answered the major um, question of why I keep running across this uh, particular behavior from other people, and that it is finger pointing with three pointing back at me. So I have another question. Very good. I have a dog. <laughs> I have um, two dogs, but one particular dog who is a wonderful bodyguard. He takes his job seriously. However three in the morning or all sorts of weird hours, he will suddenly jump up and run to the sliding glass door and start barking at something in the backyard. However, I will go, turn on the light, look everywhere and cannot find anything. Can you tell me what he's barking at? I mean, is he seeing fairies or something going on? His name's Charlie. Charlie. Hello, Charlie. <laughs> we do sense into some extraterrestrial energy drawn to your consciousness. Do you have connections to extraterrestrial beings at all? An interest in this area? Yes. Yes. We sense something is beginning to manifest energetically around your property and the idea of the 3 a.m. period is when consciousness is perhaps at its highest on your planet yes well that's good that was my suspicion and hope thank oh, you very, very much good. yes blessings to you blessings to you too 
Okay, um, thank you for that. We have a question in the chat. Um, we have several actually. Mir Jana wants to know, she says, what are the important downloads needed in this moment that she can receive um, from her guides and her higher self that can benefit herself and other selves? Herself and her other selves. Was that clear? Should I say it again? Yes, yes. Is she not available? You say she is only in text. She's text. she's in the she's in the text of the YouTube chat. So I'm taking questions from there and reading them out. So I'll I'll read it more clearly. Um, she asks. She says, "What are the important downloads needed in this moment that she can receive from her guides and her higher self that will benefit herself and her other selves?" Herself and her other selves. I, I guess she means her multidimensional uh, incarnations, maybe past, present, and future, as well as congruent. All right. Well, we may, if we. Your name is Jenna, yes? <clears throat> her name is Mir Jenna. Mir, Mir Jenna. Jenna. Yeah. Mir Jenna. Well, Mia Yana, we will address address yourself primarily first, and the other aspects of yourselves, your other aspects of your multidimensional nature, your past and future lives, are always, in a sense, garnering information from this life you are experiencing now. So there is always cross connection. However, we would prefer to address you specifically in this timing. For it is this life that is the focal point of this life, is it not? And those other aspects of yourself are in parallel worlds, perhaps even parallel versions of yourself, having parallel conversations with the channel in this form and getting their own information. So we will trust that those aspects of yourselves are getting what they need, where they from need, and we will focus in on your consciousness and see what we may garner, what we may intuit is relevant for you at this time. Is there some guide, some teacher? We sense there may be an individual in your reality, a guide, a consciousness that is coming more and more into your reality, more and more in your world. We suggest you focus upon this guide. This guide has information for you. We sense are speaking of, and we suggest you give trust and validity to this guide, for this guide has much information that can impart and share with you that will accelerate you down this timeline. Okay? Okay. Thank you very much. <clears throat> we have a question from Lilypad. And she asked, she said, three nights ago, something woke her up and it was something that uh, manipulated or used her voice and said something she didn't understand. And she was wondering if you could say what that voice was. Well, first and foremost, we, we would always say that nothing can manipulate you unless you give it, you give your power away. You are the creator of your own reality. So another entity can only manipulate you if you are giving them the opportunity to manipulate you, you are giving your power away. So we would suggest in future, you stand in your power and understand that you are the creator of your reality and you always have the option to give your power away. But we understand that some of you may find this exciting and if you do so, we would not hold that away from you if you felt the information was relevant. Maybe you can give, can you give um, maybe her some ideas on a way to um, say, become more conscious of anything that may be wanting to work with her so that she can become more conscious of it or so that she can prevent it from happening in the future if it's something that she doesn't want? Yes, we, we would suggest that you learn to recognize your own energy and then you have the opportunity to notice when other energies are moving into your reality. And also to stay in that state of being which you prefer to the best of your ability. And know that when you are in a state of 
love and light and you are in your heart and in the state of unconditional love to the best of your ability, you will really only attract entities into your reality that are of like for like frequency. For what you put out is what you get back. If you are staying in that state of unconditional love for yourself and other beings to the best of your ability, it is most likely you will only attract other entities that are I mean, like for like frequency. And from this state of following your excitement, following your joy, being who you truly are, your authentic self, and staying in a state of unconditional love for yourself, in the belief that you are the creator of your reality, in the knowing that nothing can really affect you unless you give it permission to do so. From this state, you are in a sense very safe in a bubble of love in a sense where you will only attract like for like beings most likely. So this is the state of being we would sense into. Thank you for that. Um, Eva has a question. Um, oh, all right, okay, not bad. Hi, and thank you for your wisdom. Um, Hi, and thank I you have, for your wisdom. Thank you. I have a question on, um, my brain seems not to be functioning too well and I don't find myself grounded in this reality. So I wonder if you could suggest any downloads or any implants or whatever you think would be good for me to function better in this lifetime. All right, so you say you are feeling ungrounded. Yes. 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 All right. So the most important information we will give you would be to ground yourself in this reality. All right. Yes, and we will share more. Do not worry. We will not leave you hanging with that. So the idea to fully ground yourself in this reality is to take action upon your downloads, to take action upon your inspiration. For well, the idea is that if you are ungrounded, it is likely that you are already receiving the higher dimensional connections that you, the downloads and the inspirations, yes? Yes. All right. But what we suggest is to state to ground this energy in your reality. You are feeling ungrounded because you are getting the downloads and the inspirations and the nudges to move in certain directions. However, it is likely we, we sense that you are not grounding these energies in physical reality. You are not taking action upon your inspirations. So one of the main teachings, sharings, energetic perspectives we share with your reality is the idea of following your highest excitement moment to moment to the best of your ability and grounding your inspirations in physical reality. But the idea is that your excitement, your joy, your passion in life is the guidance of your higher mind, the guidance of your higher self, the guidance of your higher consciousness. And when you feel excited, inspired, intuitive to do something in your physical reality, this is really your higher self saying, this is the best way for you to move in your reality at this moment. This is the best way to ground yourself in physical reality, to work for the expansion of your own consciousness, to work for the expansion of your own being, to accelerate your own growth, and to be of greatest service to yourself and all beings in creation. For your higher mind, your higher self always has the greater picture, always has the greater aspect, the greater knowing in mind of what is relevant, what is beneficial for all beings in your reality. So when you are truly aligned with your excitement and not disguising anxiety as excitement or confusing excitement with anxiety, when you are truly in alignment with your excitement, your inspiration, your heart's calling to move forth in this reality in a certain way, you are grounding the energy as you take action. You are bringing the guidance of your higher mind into this reality. And it is always at the highest service and the most benefit to all beings in creation. So the idea is that when you receive an inspiration, when you feel excited to move in a certain way, when you feel joy and knowing and connectivity to source, and the inspiration flows from this to take action in your physical reality in a certain form, we suggest it is most important that you do take action in this form. For is this what which grounds the energy, which completes the circuit? Often the idea of many of you when you say, I'm feeling ungrounded, I'm not feeling connected to earth, it's because you're not grounding the energy that is flowing through you. You're not carrying out your excitement in physical reality. So we would suggest to you 
we will ask you, is there something that excites you that would, you would love to be doing in physical reality that you are not acting upon at this moment? Yes, definitely. Would you like to share with us what it is? Yeah, well, it's actually art, painting, photo photography, any forms of art. Very good. And you will find this very grounding as you, as you act upon this inspiration, as you let go of your own fears of self-doubt, of lack of self-worth, these beliefs that many of you humans have that I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, people will judge me, I can't do this, something will go wrong, what happens if it doesn't work out? What happens if my reality doesn't support me? What happens if I go broke? Once you begin to transmute these negative beliefs that your civilization holds on to and see that they hold no weight in reality, for you are the creators of your own reality. You are the divine love, light, consciousness of the creator. And you are made within the eyes of creation that creation sees in itself. And you are infinitely loved by creation. You are infinitely perfect in the eyes of creation. And when you come to see this in yourselves, when you come to love yourselves unconditionally and see that the greatest gift you can give to Earth is to act on your excitement and the very idea that you get the inspiration to act upon your excitement in the form of art, photography, these creative ideas, is your higher self saying, this is what you're here to do. This is what you're best at. This is your greatest gift to humanity. And when you come to see from this perspective and trust and know in this understanding, even if your own mind or eyes you're not a picasso or a da vinci or one of these great artists and your art appears not to be of the same quality in your own judgment understand that it is your gift to creation your gift to humanity and even if your judgment in your own eyes says this is got good enough the very idea that you're inspired to create this in your reality is the guidance of god of source of your higher mind your soul saying to you this is the greatest gift you can give to humanity. There is nothing more you can do for humanity than this gift. For this is the perfect example of you. And when you rest into that energy, when you see that this is your gift, this is your inspiration, this is your calling to share with humanity, this is the way you will be of greatest service to humanity, to yourself and to all of creation. For the guidance of higher mind always takes into account all of creation. When you see and learn to love yourself unconditionally, and learn to trust in yourself and your own gifts and learn to trust in the fact that when you take action upon these inspirations to carry out the artwork to do your drawings and your photography you have the higher consciousness of your higher mind working through you and this is how creations of wonder this is how all the greats in your planet have worked da vinci picasso newton all these greats, Einstein, these people that brought great inspiration to your world, it's because they were working in unison with their higher mind. They weren't trying to figure things out with their physical mind. It was Einstein himself that said, my greatest inspiration seemed to come in the spaces between thoughts. My greatest inspiration seemed to come in the spaces, be spaces between thoughts, not in the logical thinking. It's because he was gaining information, gaining wisdom from the higher mind. And this is where his greatest breakthroughs came and this is the idea that when you are living in the moment when you are painting in the flow with no physical with no mind saying oh i'm not good enough i'll never be able to sell this i'm not good enough at this when you let go of those in those ideas that physical programming that you're picked up from other people that have nothing to do with who you are when you let go of these beliefs that are other people's baggage and drop into the flow of the present moment the, the painting will flow the brush will flow naturally because you are in unison with the higher mind. You're moving in flow with creation. You are in the flow states. You are in peak performance states. You are in the channeling state when you are in flow, when you are living in the moment, when you are letting these inspirations flow through you onto the artwork. It is very similar to what you are experiencing now through the channel, this channeling state. The channel has let go of its physical thoughts, but the channel still can have beliefs that say, I'm not good enough. I'm not worthy. Maybe I'm making all this up. Maybe I'm not good enough. These beliefs can and do from time to time still exist in the channel. But when the channel drops into the channeling state, he puts this all aside for a while. He says, well, I know this can help humanity in some way. I know this is working. I know there's something to this. And I'm just going to put these beliefs out the way for a couple of hours and do the channeling and see what happens and go with the flow and have some fun. 
And when he's in this state, when he's letting go of all these ideas of who he is, what he thinks he needs to be, his fears and self-doubts of being right, being wrong, looking silly, looking stupid, he can allow himself to drop into the flow of the channeling state. He can allow the conscious words to flow through him effortlessly into his reality because his physical mind, his doubting mind is no longer getting in the way. And he's dropping into the flow, the essence of creation, the natural growth and inspiration of creativity, of creation moving through, through himself. There is a natural flow to creation. This is how creation is born. Creation has a natural flow to it, a natural movement. And the idea is that when you are doing your painting, when you let go of your self-doubts and your lack of self-worth and all these human beliefs that many, most of you contain within your being to some degree or other, when you let go of these ideas and merely put your brush to the, to the canvas and say, I'm not going to think about anything. I'm just going to let the brush move where it wants to go and you flow and you paint and you dab and you choose colors and you just do and you grow. And this is the idea of being in the channeling state, being in the flow state, not listening to those beliefs that say you can't do it. And this is really the idea of following your excitement moment to moment to the best of your ability and following your life purpose. It is, in a sense, akin to the channeling state. You're getting out of your own way. You're getting into the natural flow of creation. You are trusting the inspiration of your higher mind, your higher self. The very idea that you are feeling excited, joy, inspiration to proceed through the modalities of photography, artistic works, this creativity is the guidance of your higher self. It's the natural flow of consciousness, the natural flow of creation moving through your vehicle saying, this is how creation wishes to explore through you. Are you going to argue with God? Are you going to argue with us? You feel free to if you wish, it's your free will, but we are saying this is who you are. This is the greatest gift you can give to creation. So when you let go of the, all these old beliefs, all this old baggage that you've picked up from your civilization that somehow you are not good enough, not worthy, these beliefs that have been going around in your human civilization for thousands of years and we find highly humorous how you keep telling yourselves these illusionary these stories. When you drop this baggage and let go and drop into the flow states and let your excitement and inspiration move through you effortlessly, flowing, energetically, vibrationally, vibrantly, you will see the vibrant colors of your higher self reflected in the vibrant picture on the canvas before you. Does this make sense? Does this help? I don't think I she's don't... able to connect at the moment. Uh, Ava, are you there? Oh, okay. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yes, it's extremely grateful. Actually, it's it's just speaking straight to my heart. Perfect. Just just absolutely amazingly perfect advice for me for this moment. Thank you very much. And Thank we you. suggest. You continue yeah. this communication with your heart. As we speak to your heart, speak to your own heart and let your heart speak to the canvas, all right? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. There's, also, there's also someone in the chat that said that this was very much their question. Siska said, oh my gosh, this is my question. Thank you very much, so much for um, this question about grounding and art. So, Thank you for your synchronicity, Siska. <laughs> okay, there's another question uh, in the chat. It's from, uh, one more second, let me make sure that I'm, I'm staying in my order. Okay, it's from Jess M. And let me get back to it. It says, um, is there a past life of mine that you can tell me about that needs healing at this time? Can you help assist me in this process as well? Much love and blessings. Well, we would suggest to you, this is really the idea of healing in the present, healing in this life, because you cannot, in a sense, heal your past life, because your past life is your past life, and that past life is actually now in this present moment, because there is no past, there is only consciousness coexisting in different frequencies. That past life is experiencing its own life in the way that past life needs to experience its own life. And it can cross over, it will pick up energetically, naturally, from you going through your own healing process, what it needs to co-connect with to heal itself. And in this way, we would suggest to you that the most important thing to heal this past life is to heal your present life. And the idea is really that you are focalized in this life for the idea 
of healing whatever needs to be healed within your current energetic vibrational pattern via via connecting with that past life so focus on healing your own life and that past life will connect into your life and heal what it needs to from you healing this life and you understand it's crossing over but we suggest you focus first and foremost on how you can use the what you have garnered from this past life to heal your own life how does this past life relate to your own life are there similar emotional patterns you can see in this past life that are mirroring your emotional states in this current life and what can you garner and how how can you see what can you connect into and what understanding of the greater picture of how you are unconditionally loved by creation and creation is always suggesting to yourself that you unconditionally love yourselves you rewire your lack of beliefs of lack of self-worth self-doubts belief in not being worthy of abundance or whatever doubt self lack beliefs you hold on to within yourself and learn to love yourself unconditionally and say oh well i see i hold on to these lack doubts i love myself unconditionally for holding on to these lack doubts because i understand that i came here into this reality to pick up these lack doubts from these humans that don't really know what they're talking about and believe them into existence and believe that they are real in some way for the opportunity of transmuting for them for the opportunity of seeing that they are not my beliefs for the opportunity of raising my frequency into the understanding that i am one with the creator i am one with creation i am one with the unconditional love of the universe and if creation loves me unconditionally why shouldn't i love myself unconditionally why should i argue with the aspect of creation well creation sees me as a part of creation an intricate part of creation but all that is was created out of you out of all aspects of creation without you without your experience all that is would not be all that is so without you the entirety of creation would collapse the entirety of the matrix would dissolve and from this perspective you can see that you are a perfect intricate part of creation so from this perhaps perspective perhaps you can see that creation loves you unconditionally because why wouldn't creation love you unconditionally because you are an intricate part of creation and creation couldn't exist without you without the perfection without the aspect of creation that you are experiencing and when you come to see this that the very fabric of creation the very physics of creation the very physics of the universe are based on the idea that all beings are unconditionally loved because all beings are essential to upholding the matrix upholding the the matrix of creation the universe has built into it that our beings are worthy of unconditional love so if perhaps you humans would stop arguing with creation for one moment and begin to love yourselves unconditionally in the way that creation loves you unconditionally you can begin to heal these wounds heal these emotional pains that you see in past lives that are perhaps mirroring circumstances in your current life and you can begin to let go of these ideas of lack of self-worth see that you are a perfect part of creation you're an intricate part of creation and creation is experiencing through you exactly what creation needs to experience through you in this moment so why would i argue with creation about my lack of self-worth when my creation sees me as infinitely worthy and you can begin to use these physics principles these principles of creation of how creation is structured to see that the very fabric of creation the fabric fabric of the universe the structure of it is built into the idea that all beings are worthy of unconditional love all beings are worthy of whatever they desire for the desire is the natural flow of creation and when you begin to heal these wounds in yourself you begin to become the real you but you begin to become the full you you begin to become the true you and these aspects of yourself from the past can tune in will tune in energetically naturally in dream time in ethereal states in other states of consciousness when you co-connect with these past lives that perhaps you aren't aware of or perhaps you are aware of on some levels you will co-connect with each other in the present moment because there really is no past there is only really the present there only is the present and from this perspective you will begin to heal each other as you heal yourself you will heal the other and the other will begin to heal itself and begin to resonate back to you and you can resonate back and forth between each other as you both heal and you both accelerate and you both see that you are worthy of unconditional love you are worthy of everything you desire and you are perfect beings in the eyes of creation you can come to see that you are perfect beings in your own eyes and mirror the eyes of creation back to you and you become healed and you become worthy and you become joyful and you become blissful 
self accelerates into a new understanding of self. Thank you very much. That's beautiful. Um, <clears throat> there's another question from, um, excuse me, let me make sure I have the right name. The question is from, oh, sorry, sorry. The chat's moving, so I'm trying to keep up with it. Um, the question is from Jenny D. She said, what are the spinning concentric circles that she sees when she closes her eyes? When she closes her eyes. Thank you. That arises, by the way. <laughs> we sense you are tapping into a universal code, a universal pattern connected to the, the spiral nature of creation, the spiral nature of reality, how the idea of phi, P-H-I, the golden ratio, is intrinsic to the birthing of creation, the birthing of your physical world, how there is a mathematical formula, often referred to as sacred geometry, that is the building blocks of creation, that is the simple, the very simple structure of creation, how creation births. You're tapping into the very structure of creation. And through seeing these images, you are tapping into the very structure of yourself, the structure of your true nature. You're beginning to see a more multidimensional perspective, a more, perhaps to use an analogy, you are seeing the matrix. As in your movie, where they see the ones and zeros, the codes putting down, you are beginning to see the code of creation. You're beginning to see the structure of the matrix, the structure of your reality. You're beginning to see a deeper understanding of how creation is structured. And we suggest if you let these energetic transmissions seep into your body and do not try to understand them too much with your physical mind. Just let, just absorb them, just be with them, be with this energy and know that you are receiving an energetic transmission, an energetic download. It can accelerate you into a more multidimensional understanding of yourself. It can allow you to access layers of creation, layers of knowledge, very relevant for your own acceleration, your own expansion. And if you wish, sharing this knowledge with other beings in your reality. So allow this to unfold, see what happens, go with the flow, and know that you are seeing a deeper aspect of yourself, and know that you can use these energetic vibrations to align you with more of who you are, more of your purpose, more of your mission, more of your calling, and a greater understanding of who and what it is you truly are. Thank you for that. I also have a question in, in a little bit like that because lately um, when I wake up and I'm in a sort of dream state, even after I've woken up for a, even up to a minute, I can still see the dream, but with my eyes open imposed over my reality. So it might be shapes or people that I'm talking to, they will still be there when, I, when I'm awake. And there's just a moment where it's still going on, this dream is still going, but I'm awake with my eyes open and even sitting up. So I don't know if you have any comments about that. Is that just more of the same than what you've already been saying? Well, it is really more of the idea of simply being able to access more aspects of yourself from a conscious state as you all expand in consciousness as you all accelerate in consciousness you are more able to enter into these deeper realms of awareness within your waking state the idea of the beta waves the beta frequency being your waking states the alpha waves being a state of consciousness associated with meditation, deep meditation known as the theta states, and then going deeper into delta. These ideas of these deeper layers of consciousness that are associated with the delta waves, with deep sleep and, the, and these other areas of consciousness that you access in your sleep realms are becoming more accessible to you in your waking state. It's really an understanding Yes, of moving into a multidimensional state, a multidimensional awareness, where you can tap into these new brainwave patterns more and more, 
within your waking state. And you may eventually, you will eventually as a civilization come to the point where you see that these realities are really no different from your physical reality. They are merely just other aspects of your consciousness, other aspects of the eternal dream, the eternal dream of creation. For this is one dream. You are dreaming a dream of who you are. And the idea is that you will come to see as your civilization accelerates, as your civilization grows and expands, that these aspects of consciousness that you define as dream state and waking state are really one and the same. They're just different vibrational indices, different vibrational aspects of your own consciousness you choose to tap into for your own growth, your own learning and your own expansion. And as you begin to accelerate through this reality, as you begin to expand into more of who you are, as you begin to live more in the moment and are able to access more layers of your own consciousness through tapping into deeper and deeper meditative states, deeper and deeper layers of your own consciousness and more accelerated layers of your own consciousness. You'll begin to see that these multi-layered multi aspects of yourself are one and the same. You'll begin to come to see your multi-dimensional selves. You'll begin to let go of distinguishing between the dream state and the waking states. For in a sense, we are always awake and always dreaming. Always awake and always dreaming. Always awake and always dreaming. And the idea of what you say, many of you having extraterrestrial contact experiences in the dream time, you say to us, did we connect with you in reality or the dream? And we say, what's the difference? Mm. Now, thank you. That's that's. There's a there's a wonderful poem. I don't know if you know, but it says there once I once was a man who dreamed I was a butterfly, dreaming I was a man, dreaming I was a butterfly, dreaming I was a man. Yes, and this very poem we suggest you ponder this deeply and let it sink into your brain, for there is power in these kind of paradoxical poems that can reverberate your consciousness and put yourselves in a confused paradoxical state. But well, the idea is that when you are in the state of paradox, you are in a state much more akin to the consciousness of the one, the consciousness of creation. For the one, the creator, is in a constant state of paradox. So yes, this poem can be very powerful at unlocking aspects of your consciousness. Thank you. Um, Diane has a question. She says, I was told previously that there is an Arcturian presence around me. Could you please tell me how I can best connect with them and any other beings who have messages for me? Many thanks. Well, first and foremost, we would always share the idea of following your highest excitement, following your dreams, being who you came here to become, aligning with your purpose, your calling, your excitement your joy and your place in this world. For the idea is that when you step onto this path of your calling, you are moving down the path of the greatest acceleration, the greatest expansion into higher levels of your own consciousness, higher levels of your own being. You are beginning to resonate on a higher frequency the more you align with the consciousness of your higher mind. And this will, in a sense, allow you to tap into other aspects of yourself, other aspects of your own consciousness, these Arcturian consciousnesses, you resonate with, you feel around you. And at the same time, it will allow you to draw into your reality through synchronicity, all the experiences, all the occurrences, all the people relevant for allowing you to gain a deeper understanding of how you can connect with these, what aspects of yourself you need to heal, you need to transform, transmute, to allow in higher frequencies, to transform the beliefs of self-doubt and lack of self-worth these ideas, when you are moving onto the path of following your highest excitement to the best of your ability, moment to moment, without hesitation, without expectation, in the knowing and understanding that you will always be supported in your reality, because why would reality not support you in your calling and your excitement when it has supported you for so long is something that you say you do not prefer, that is not your calling. When you live in this understanding and you live this accelerated path of raising your consciousness, raising your frequency, you will attract to you all the circumstances necessary to enable more of your excitement to expand into your reality. And so if you are 
truly excited in your heart, which we sense you are, to connect with these Arcturian beings, you will attract into your reality all the circumstances, all the situations, all the information, all the knowledge, all the teachings, all the healings, all the restructuring of belief patterns, all the circumstances and vibrational awakenings necessary to connect with more of this reality. So this would be our first and most important, very much the most important glimmer of information we will share with your reality. However, we will also share with you a little permission slip, a little tool that you may use, you may wish to use to connect in with this Arcturian consciousness that may assist you in resonating, in vibrating on their frequency. Because the idea is that connecting with other beings is just coming to see that they are not other beings, they are you. The idea of oneness, the idea of all of creation exists here and now as you. All of creation exists here and now as you. There is nothing outside of you. There is no past. There is no future. There is just you. And all of creation exists here and now as you. And when you rest into the present moment, when you let go of the mind's habits to go to future or past or worry or regret, when you let go of these human patterns and live more in the now, grounded in the physical moments, you gain access to more of who you are. You gain access to more of your greater self. The greater you, that is is all that is existing here and now as you. as you as you and as you tune into this frequency perhaps for a moment join us we invite all of you tuning into this call to align with us for a moment in this understanding that all of creation exists here and now as you there is nothing outside of you there is no being external to you there is no reality in the future there is nothing that happened in the past. There is only you with all realities, all potentials, all dimensions, all being, all consciousnesses existing here and now as you. And it's really just a case of shifting your vibration. It's really just a case of shifting your frequency, tuning yourself into the reality, tuning yourself into the dimension of consciousness that is most relevant for your own expansion, that is most relevant for your own awareness that is most relevant for your own being. And from this space of knowing that whatever consciousness is relevant to connect with you in that moment will connect with you because it is relevant for you, because your higher self deems it relevant. And the idea is that if you feel excited to connect with an Arcturian consciousness, this is your higher self saying, this is what is most relevant for you. So the very knowing that it is relevant for you tells you that it will happen and can happen if you allow it because it is relevant for you and the only thing that will stop it from happening if you have a belief that you cannot do it that you have a belief that is blocking it saying i'm not worthy i cannot do this my consciousness is not high enough i'm not ready for this the only thing that will block this is these kind of beliefs because the very idea that you're excited to move in this direction shows you that this is the guidance of your higher self this is your higher self saying this is relevant for you in this moment so if you can transmute these beliefs, redefine these beliefs, see that beliefs are easy to change. Beliefs are just beliefs and you can change your beliefs to any belief you wish. And see that you are worthy of connecting with this entity. See that you are worthy of connecting with any consciousness that is relevant for you in the moment, that you feel excited to do so because the excitement is your higher self saying this is relevant for you, this is the next step for you. When you see that you are worthy, that it is relevant and you are capable, when you have these beliefs in your consciousness, and you see and you come to understand and you have the belief and the knowing and the feeling and the resonance and we can feel into this we can sense into this this multi-dimensional vibrational frequency that all of creation exists here and now as me all of creation exists here and now as me i sense it i know it i feel it in my bones i feel the resonance i feel it in my aura i feel the energy in my body i can feel this multi-dimensional frequency Somehow I know, somehow I can sense into this energy, this frequency, that all of creation exists here and now as me. All of creation exists here and now as me. And when we stay grounded in this vibrational pattern, when we stay centered in this energetic momentum of knowing 
that all there is is this present moment all there is is now and all the things we desire to connect with exist here and now as us we can begin to sense into the multi-dimensional frequency of oneness we can begin to sense into the multi-dimensional energy of infinite creation existing here and now as us and from this vibrationary resonance we can begin to sense into through tuning into through the excitement to connect with these arcturian energies we are giving out the message hello arcturians we'd like to connect with you would you like to connect with us we love you unconditionally hello are you out there by putting out these energetic transmissions while staying grounded in the present moment in the state and the knowing and the belief that all of creation exists here and now as us as a multi-dimensional field of consciousness and awareness we can begin to tune into those arcturian energies we can begin to tune into those arcturian frequencies and we can sense the Arcturian alignments. And we can sense the Arcturian beings. beings. And we can sense the Arcturian consciousness Arcturian moving consciousness with our reality. Our reality. And we can sense them around us. around us. And we can sense their beingness. And we can sense their oneness. And we can sense their desire to connect with us. For the very idea that we feel excited to connect with these Arcturian beings suggests to us that our higher self is saying it is relevant to connect with these Arcturian beings, so they must also feel excited to connect with us. And we would suggest to you that there are many extraterrestrial entities currently surrounding this planet excited to connect with many of you. So you can all use this permission slip or use this exercise of staying grounded, staying centered in the multidimensional now, in the infinite consciousness of the present moments, and sent into these vibrational frequencies that embody our energetic field, that embody our energetic consciousness, and know that all of creation exists here and now as us. And whatever beings, entities are relevant for us to experience in this present moment will and can come forth out of this consciousness to merge with our reality in this here and now moment. And this understanding and this permission slip and this understanding of our own creatorhood will allow these connections to these Arcturian consciousnesses to come more and more into your reality every day, if you wish. Thank you very much. <clears throat> um, Mir Jana has a question. All right. Okay, you can, if you can unmute yourself and then you can talk, Mir. Hmm. Okay, there she. Oh, I, I unmute yourself. I think I muted her, but can you can you unmute yourself or not? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. There you go. Uh, okay, so uh, hello everyone. Hello, Mayana. Uh, hello. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I have one uh, uh, question. The actually i wrote uh, i don't know maybe it's same or not but generally there is um uh i would love to <clears throat> importance downloads which can benefit for uh, myself and others which are important to this moment now to move forward all right so you're asking if we have any Downloads, any transmissions relevant for you in this moment, yes? Yes, I'm asking you and uh, all my guidance, all. <laughs> all right, we will see. One moment. Hello, Mayana. Hello. I am one of your guides. Do you recognize my energy? Yes. Oh, very good. Do you have any questions for me specifically? I would love uh, to have just some, to receive some uh, guidance to move uh, forward for my purpose and my calling. I can feel, but generally maybe I can see something too. <laughs> what do you see? What do you feel? 
I feel so much in sync with everything I and the, how I move. Generally, as always, I would love to to make some bigger steps <laughs> and move faster. And what's stopping you from making bigger steps and moving faster? Oh. <laughs> Nothing. <clears throat> Generally, I feel I can fly. Nothing? Yes. Well, something must be, otherwise you would be doing this, yes? Oh. Maybe some some past beliefs. Some past beliefs? Mm. Some current, current beliefs, yes? Mm. So if they were past beliefs, they would no longer be hindering you, yes? Oh, yes, true. <laughs> no current beliefs. So what are these beliefs? Mm. Just some connection with the past events. Would you like to share? Uh, uh, okay. I mean, um, just um, some kind of um, experience uh, I mean that's abundant experience but not generally uh, I would love to uh, to move it to change it it means um, so um, I had a lot of experience of uh, experiencing not enoughness and you know moving in a, a variety of uh, different environments and people so uh, I think that um, that it's time to change this and to um, to move and to change uh, to change the family to change environment to change this and uh, experience experience real abundance of everything I want and everything I am, so even on multi-dimensional or uh, multi-realities uh, or uh, multi-levels, uh, multi but I mean to have varied experience, not just, you know, typing in the same or similar one, but, you know, to, to, uh, to be variety of many other experiences which I, I believe I deserve much more than <laughs> uh, You believe you deserve else. much more? Again, I did not hear. You believe you deserve much more? Yes, I do. You sure? do? Yes, I You do. know this? Yes. You sure? Yes, very much. <laughs> we sense doubt in your voice. I'm sure. <laughs> All right. <laughs> we suggest you look into deeply these beliefs. We suggest you look into deeply these aspects of yourself, the beliefs you have around whether you are worthy of abundance, whether you are worthy of unconditional love, whether you are worthy of following your dreams, and be honest with yourself about how you feel about this. And that would be our greatest guidance in this moment. Mm. Wonderful. Yes. Thank you Thank for you, supporting. Mariana. We love you. I love you too so much. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, we are the Yael. We are back. Good day. Hello. Okay, perfect. Um, Krulak has a question. Hello, Krolak. Hello. Good day, Shivai. Yes, I have, actually have 
three questions that I wanted to ask. My three questions. questions, all right. Yes. My first one is about an experience I had last night while in the astral dimension. I was interacting with some humans, but I think they weren't from Earth. And I think they were inviting me to uh, visit their world in the future. Um, I don't I don't remember the conversation. It was pretty long. But I do remember them. I do remember them saying that uh, most Earth humans that they that they invite usually want to go off world to get away from their problems. Um, I simply I simply told them that I would like to come, but there are things on Earth that I must do first. Um, I'm not sure. I don't I don't remember the entire conversation, but I wanted to know um, who the beings were that I was speaking with. We sense they were a future version of Earth in which humans have hybridized with beings such as ourselves. where there has been an intermingling of many extraterrestrial genetics on your planet over the purpose of several hundred years and you are tapping into a future version of yourself that is more mingled with extraterrestrial DNA, extraterrestrial genetics, extraterrestrial soul connections. It is really the idea that many of the extraterrestrial consciousnesses that are currently connecting with your reality have down a future timeline interbred with your civilization. There has been a new civilization birthed through the breeding of, through the divine union of extraterrestrial beings with human beings. And a new version of Earth is born in your future. And it is these beings we sense you are connecting into. Uh, thank you for that uh, information. Can we share any more information around this area? Or does that answer your question? It answers my question, unless there's more you wanted to say. We will simply say, sweet dreams. Thank you. Uh, my second question is, is there any messages for me in this uh, current moment? Be yourself, be who you are, follow your dreams, and they will take you to a magical world. Of okay. self-understanding, of self-realization, of homecoming, remembrance to who you truly are for this is the path of the awakening this is the path of the initiates to align with who you are to align with that vibrational frequency that multi-dimensional crystalline energy of who you are in the form of your excitement in the form of your dreams in the form of your aspirations for this world, for this dimension, for this plane of existence. For as you tap into these realms of consciousness, as you begin to birth in this reality, the true you, the vibrationary pattern of who you are, you become more of your higher self. You merge with the frequency of your higher self. 
the initiations you desire are contained within you, within your excitement, within your calling, within you being yourself. So tune into those vibratory patterns of those things which excite you the most. Tune into those vibratory patterns of the joy and consciousness and expansion that you desire the most and birth them in reality. Give birth in this creation to these dreams, these desires. Ground them in the physical. Birth them in reality. Take action, moment to moment, to the best of your ability to give birth to this reality, that which in your heart desires to give birth. You know what we are speaking of, yes? I have an idea. An idea? Well, we suggest you dive deep into this idea and turn this idea into a reality. Thank you. And uh, my last question, it's about, well, I receive a lot of visits from different, different beings. Um, uh, today, especially, today, especially I was visited by someone. Um, I didn't get, I didn't get a visualization of who it was. Um, I can, I can feel the beings that are around me sometimes physically. Um, but whenever I try to see them, I'm unable to. I was wondering if you would, I was wondering if I, if you had any information on how I can uh, see, see beings that are, that are around me, some, maybe physically or astrally. Sometimes I can't see them even in my astral state, but I can feel their presence. And are you able to tell me who it was that came to visit me earlier this morning? We sense again, they were similar beings to the beings you talk of in the dream state from a future earth. And we point you to the exercise we previously gave a few questions ago of tuning into the here and now, tuning into the understanding that all of creation exists here and now as you. And from here, you'll be able to more easily tune into their energy. All right, does this help? Yes, it helps. Thank you, Shivai, good day. Are you all right? Do you need any water or do you need to have anything like that or can we continue? We do not need water. The channel, however, may take this opportunity for a drink. That's what we meant. That's what I meant. Excuse me. We understand. We are playing with you. <laughs> okay. Refreshed. Okay. Um, there's a question. Uh, there's a couple more questions in the chat. Uh, one of the questions is, let me make sure I have it again right. I, I scroll up and then I lose it. Um, Simo wants to know, said, um, I, have, I feel a strong connection to the Pleiades. Can you tell me if there's a connection pe between the star system and myself? Thank you. No, not at all. We are playing. <laughs> That's a good answer. Yes, the very idea that you raise this question points to the fact that there is something there for you, for the answer lies within the question, as we have said many times. The very idea that this question has come into your consciousness should be appointed to you that there is something there for you. But in a sense, the answer is born out of the question, and the question is born out of the answer. They are one and the same thing. So, yes, there are connections to the Pleiadian civilization relevant for your progression on this planet and relevant for the learning and expansion of the Pleiadian consciousness because we, as extraterrestrials, learn as much on these transmissions as you do. 
it is a great learning curve for us to see how you humans experience your interesting reality, your distorted view of creation. And of course, all realities are to some extent a distorted view of creation, a slightly different perspective of creation, a distortion of source consciousness. However, your reality has become very distorted in its understanding of the laws of creation. However, you are coming to learn, coming to understand how creation is structured and the idea of being connected to these Pleiadian consciousnesses is that they are here to share with you a deeper understanding of who you are, to give you guidance, pointers, to bring you back into your own understanding of the structure of creation, your own, your own understanding of yourself as source consciousness. The own, uh, your own understanding as a being of perfect love light awareness, infinitely deserving of unconditional love, infinitely deserving of all the abundance and things you desire to bring forth into this reality, infinitely deserving of being who you are moment to moment, of following your excitement, following your dreams in the unconditional love and the unconditional abundance and holding and comfort of creation. So yes, the idea of being inspired to connect with Pleiadian consciousness, of raising the question within your consciousness, I feel connected to the Pleiadians, am I connected to the Pleiadians? We would say, of course. You know this already, do you not, dear one? For you wouldn't even be able to ask the question if you didn't, in a sense, somehow connect into this reality, connect into this Pleiadian dimension of consciousness. So we point you back to the transmission we gave earlier about resting into the knowing that all of creation exists here and now as you. All of creation exists here and now as you. And live in the present moment. Live in this multidimensional awareness of your true self, your true nature, your true beingness, your true consciousness. For the purpose of expanding your own reality down a certain path, a certain timeline, a certain awakening cycle, with, if you wish, these Pleiadian entities. So use this permission slip, the understanding that all existence exists here and now as you, and whatever beings are relevant to connect with you in this reality will and are and can be brought into this reality through the understanding that your excitement is the pointer, is the guidance slip, and is the creational momentum, is the creational force. But the idea that when you are acting upon your excitement, you're not only moving towards those things you prefer, you're actually creating them in your reality. The very idea that you're excited to connect with Pleiadian consciousness and you are acting upon the excitement to use permission slips such as those we have shared to connect with Pleiadian consciousness is the mechanism that is actually creating the Pleiadian consciousness interaction within your reality. So know this, know you are infinitely worthy of this, no, this is desired on both sides of the coin and the Pleiadian sign and your sign through the understanding that if you are truly excited to do so, this is the guidance of your higher self and the guidance of your higher self always imbues all aspects of creation, always imbues the highest good for all of creation. So it is not only the highest good for you, it is also the highest good for the Pleiadian consciousness and all beings involved in your reality, your loved ones, your family, your human beings, all entities listening in on any transmissions that may occur, but they're all many beings that are listening in on this transformation, this transmission, transformation, transmission, at this time, you're not alone. It is not just the Yael. There are Pleiadian entities. The very idea that when you bring into your consciousness the question, am I supposed to connect with Pleiadian consciousness? All of a sudden, many ears prick up in many dimensional domains of existence, particularly the Pleiadian realm. And they see, wow, another human's waking up to his potential to connect with us. We're getting excited. We're here. We're waiting. So know this. Follow your excitement. Follow your dreams. Become who you are. Become the one. Resonates with the understanding that all of existence exists here and now as you. And any entity you wish to attract into your reality can be attracted into your reality through following your excitement and aligning with the understanding that is merely another aspect of your own consciousness. Thank you for that. Um, basically, that, that's a question that's coming up again uh, with another person called Shanman 
a nulligal and and just to preface it if 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 i understand what you all are saying to us is that if you feel a connection then there definitely is a connection and if you feel that maybe you should try to connect it's coming up in your consciousness because now you are ready to connect and now the 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 knocking on the door is there is is that correct yes if it's coming from a true inspiration it's coming from a true excitement a true exactly if you feel excited inside, not dwelling inside and it feels good it feels aligning it feels harmonizing it makes you feel elated in some way or inspired or intrigued if it instills a positive fre frequency within you then this is the sign that this is relevant for you yes Okay, well, Shanman's question, well, wasn't it actually, it's not a question, it's more of a statement, but it's um, <clears throat> that this person was told that they have, they're Syrian with an Arcturian heart, and they would like to know if you have any feedback about it. Syrian with an Arcturian heart. Hmm, interesting. Well, first and foremost, you're not Syrian, you're human. This aspect of you is human. This you is human. However, you have within your consciousness, within your soul group, aspects of yourself that are Syrian, aspects of yourself that are Pleiadian, aspects of yourself that are Arcturian. And you are likely tapping in to the idea that you say, please repeat, you are saying you are, you, you sense you are Syrian with an Arcturian heart. Was this the questioner's question? Yes. That's what it. That's what the statement was. The statement was that he was uh, Syrian with an Arcturian heart. All right. Well, we sense you are tapping into the idea of connections to Syrian and Arcturian energy. Perhaps the idea that your dominant connection, the parallel incarnation, coexisting here and now as you that is most relevant for this reality is the Syrian idea. But how, however, within that realm, there is also aspects of the Arcturian heart, the Arcturian alignment to the heart source of creation that is also relevant for you. So from our perspective, this is how it works. All right, there are, there are in a sense, multiple versions of you existing within your soul, such as your soul has chosen to fragment up into certain aspects and experience lives within the Syrian star system, within the Arcturian system, within the human realm on planet Earth, and within many past and future lives and parallel incarnations and other dimensions and other levels of consciousness, all for the purpose of exploring a certain theme, in a sense, the soul's theme, the soul's purpose, the soul's calling, one of which is you. And the you you are now is a human on planet Earth. However, you have aspects of your soul group, aspects of your soul consciousness in the Syria system, in the Arcturia system. And the idea that you are sensing into the Syrian, I am Syrian with an Arcturian heart, is pointing to the fact that there are connections to these realms that are very relevant for your own exploration in this reality. The, old, the very exploration of what Syrian consciousness can bring to your world, the very idea of what Arcturian alignment with heart consciousness can bring to this world, can bring to this experience. So this is the idea that there is a message in there for you. There is something within the idea of Arcturian heart connection, the Arcturian's connection to the heart of creation to the unconditional love of creation, to the wisdom, the alignment that this can bring into reality through living your heart's dreams, through living through your heart's awareness, your heart's consciousness, your heart's code. You can align with more of who you are. You can become very precise in how you experience your reality. When you let go of your mind-based beliefs, your physical thoughts about how reality should be created, what you should do, when you should do certain things, and you begin to align with the heart's energy and connect through the heart's energy to the, the energy of the heart of these Arcturian beings and the consciousness of these Syrian beings, you can begin to see that a very precise alignment can occur.
occur. A very precise way of living moment to moment in the belief and understanding of how you create your reality, of what reality you can shift into, of what dreams you can birth into your world can occur through connecting into these dimensional gateways into Arcturian and Syrian realms and the idea of heart alignment with purpose and soul's calling. Thank you very much. Um, Tracy Hunter wanted to uh, ask if you would relay a message to her Yayal children that she loves her children and also would like to know if um, she says mom loves you that's her with exclamation points and and then she wants to know um, I guess if there's messages for her but she says I'm having a great time life is beautiful with my new creations oh very good thank you um, we understand what she is pointing to. However, we would like to clarify a certain thing, perhaps for the crowd listening, if not for the individual who has stated the question, the idea that those beings, those entities that the questioner is pointing to is the idea of having hybrid children, we sense, with, from her own abduction experiences with the Zeta Greys. And the idea that there are hybrid children living aboard, living amongst our crafts, our Yayelian ships at this timing. However, us as the Yayel are from the future. We are beings that have evolved, that have gone through several generational reading processes down several hundred years of time and evolved into the Yael out of these original hybrid children from our past. But there is a difference. So we are from the future and the hybrid children are from the now. And while we are both existing within this now, in this current timeline, as we speak, or, or just outside your Earth's atmosphere, with the hybrid children on our craft, we are, in a sense, future versions of the hybrid children. These callers did not fully understand this idea, but we would say these hybrid children you speak of are listening in, they are on our craft, and they are tapping into the consciousness seat. And they say to you in this moment, we love you, we love you so much, in time we wish to connect with you in dream time more mommy we love you come to us in dreams 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 thank you all right perfect well, your hybrid children will enable you to tune in to their frequency the very to their frequency the very sensing of their frequency of course experience yourself in the past is reminding you of the energetic state and this frequency will allow you to activate connections to these beings that love you very much in your own dream time so sweet dreams thank you very much for that um <clears throat> there's a question within the chat from anya and she says if we want to contact you how can we do that how many different Yael races are there? Well, there is only one Yael race. There are other hybrid races. One known to many of you quite well as the Sasani, now the Shikani, Bashar's race, another hybrid race. There is another hybrid race known to the channel as the Playel. And some others beginning to enter the channel's consciousness. However, there is only one Yael race. And was the question, please restate how they can connect with us more, yes? If, yes, the question was, if we want to connect to you, how can we do that? Well, we have already shared a permission slip for connecting in with extraterrestrial consciousness ease from here. We would remind you that it's a state of shifting frequency, shifting your vibrational energy. So as you come to recognize our frequency, which you are doing in this transmission, you are doing in this call, by connecting in with us, you are 
in a sense, imbuing your own being with our energy, our frequency. It's a state of really remembering this frequency, dropping into that state of knowing that all existence exists here and now as you in this present moment. Your multidimensional self contains all things, all beings, all consciousnesses, all experiences, all past, all future, here and now. Tap into this understanding, tap into this multidimensional awareness of who you are. Tap into this vibrational field of connectivity to all of existence, to all of yourself. And from this state, remember our frequency, this frequency we are imparting with you now. And this will enable you to tune into our frequency and gain greater access and greater understanding and greater knowledge of our perspective of creation, enable you to tap into certain beings, certain collectives within our consciousness for the further expansion of your own being and your own creation. Thank you very much. Just so you know, Anya, there was a very wonderful meditation earlier in this channeling. So if after this is over, go back and listen to it. And that will also, that's what uh, the Yael were just referring to. There was a very nice, Nice channeling, or excuse me, very nice meditation and, and a guide to how specifically how to connect. Um, there is a question from Pete. He says that um, after he let me, let me make sure that I read it correctly because it's it's quite involved. <laughs> okay, it says one moment. Um, He said something, oh, here it is. He goes, I feel exhausted in my energy. And when I ground myself, I feel that I lose focus. And afterwards, my guides and my star family show me in playing an interesting video game. Um, he wants to know if there's a message in all of this. Well, the message is that this reality can be a very interesting video game when you begin to view it as so. When you begin to find joy, passion, creativity, excitement in your life and begin to ground that in reality. For when many of you say you are grounding yourselves and using permission slips that have been given in your reality to ground you in reality, these are all good, these are all valid and relevant if they are working for you. However, if you find you are repetitively using these grounding exercises and they are not working for you, we suggest to use a greater grounding exercise we would share with you to view life as an interesting video game, to view life as a fun video game, to view life as a fun exploration of creation. But the idea of fun, of interest, of excitement, of joy, is the guidance of your higher mind, the guidance of your higher consciousness. And as we answered it in a very similar manner at the, to a question closer to the beginning of this transmission, the idea is the best way to ground yourself in reality is to live your excitement, to live your purpose, live your calling, live your dreams. And when you receive these inspirations, these downloads, these excitements, joy, creativity, creative inspiration, to do certain things in your reality, you act upon them, you ground this energy. For many of you get these inspirations, you get these excitements, you have these joys within you to act on a certain way in your reality. But due to your limiting belief systems that say, I do not believe this reality will support me financially if I explore this reality. I do not believe I am worthy of doing this. I do not think I'm good enough to do this. I do not believe I am worthy of expressing exactly how creation wants to express myself in reality, but that is what you are saying. But the very idea is that when you're excited to do something in reality, it's your higher mind saying, this is the most relevant thing you can do in this reality. This is the best thing you can do in your creation to be of the highest service to yourself, to be of the highest service to all beings in your creation. This is the natural flow of consciousness. This is the natural flow of source energy that wants to come into your reality in this particular modality for the healing, the transmutation, and the acceleration of your planet and the consciousness of this realm in a particular way that is most relevant for all beings in creation. And when you come to see this, when you come to understand this, and when you come to see that you are worthy, you are worthy of all the things you desire, you are worthy of unconditional love for yourself and all beings, you are worthy of the abundance that is necessary for you to explore reality in whatever way you deem necessary to explore your reality through your excitement. You can begin to ground these energies in reality, create, complete the circuit, ground the circuit, ground the current, the current of consciousness is flowing from source, through your higher self, through guides, through inspiration, through excitement into your reality, to explore reality in a certain way, a certain exciting modality, a certain exciting expression of consciousness. You can ground in these energies, you can anchor in these energies, you can anchor in these vibrations, your realm, and ground them in your consciousness, and ground them in your world, through acting upon them, through acting them out 
moment to moment. Whatever excitement you feel in your being to act upon in every given moment, act upon it to the best of your ability and you can so you can act upon it no more. And then say to yourself again, what is the most exciting thing I can act upon now? And act upon that to the best of your ability until you can act upon that no more. And continue and continue and continue until you ride the wave of the dream of consciousness into a new grounded, ecstatic expression of who you are. Thank you so very much. <clears throat> Lily Pet has two questions. She says that she's got a street cat that always keeps coming back to her house and she wants to know what does this cat want, if the cat has anything specifically. And then also, I'll ask the second question after you answer that one. A street cat named Desire. <laughs> exactly. So what is it you desire? What is it you see in this cat? What is it you see in the way this cat lives its world, lives its life that you desire in yourself? For this cat is a mirror. This cat is a mirror of your own consciousness. A cat, this cat is a mirror of something that exists within you. This cat is trying to tell you something. It's trying to show you something through the way it acts through the way it lives, through the way it sleeps, through the way it purrs, through the way it eats. There is a certain consciousness, there is a certain way of being, a certain ease of life that exists within this cat, a certain natural flow. And this cat is trying to show you that you can live like this yourself. You can be like the cat. You can be like the street cat named Desire, the cat that desires to sleep, the cat that desires to eat, the cat that desires to purr, the cat that desires to visit you, and the cat that effortlessly acts upon its desire in every given moment. And it doesn't judge itself. It doesn't say, I shouldn't be eating now. It doesn't say, I shouldn't be purring now. It, shouldn't say, it doesn't say, I shouldn't be sleeping now. It doesn't say, I shouldn't be visiting this lovely lady now. It doesn't say I shouldn't be going back on the street now. It simply acts, flows in the moment to its desire. It doesn't know otherwise. It's naturally connected to source energy. It's naturally connected to source connection. It hasn't gone through the disconnection, the disconnection process of embodying the physical mind and believing it is a separate entity. It is still connected to source and it simply acts upon its desire, acts upon its calling, acts upon its life purpose effortlessly in any given moment with effortless flow. So this street cat named Desire shows you that you desire to live like the cat in desire, true desire, true desire that stems from the heart, not desire that comes from the lack belief that I need this or that to make me happy because I'm not worthy and I need security and I'm scared that if I don't have this, I won't be okay. Not that kind of desire, true desire. True desire that is birthed out of the knowing that you are the creator. True desire that is birthed out of the knowing that you are creation. True desire that is birthed out of the knowing that you are the one. True desire that births for the purpose of assisting all beings. True purpose that births, true desire that comes from the inspiration of the higher mind for the purpose of aligning you with your purpose, your calling, your destiny, and that which way you can serve humanity to the best of your ability and expand your own consciousness, expand your own being, and become the earth lady called desire. Perfect. Okay, there's, she has one more question and she says that it snowed uh, in San Antonio. I suppose that's where she's living. And she said, I heard a deep sound after color of light and then a color of light flashed. And she was wondering what was the deep sound in the sky after the lights flashed or was it her imagination? We do sense new domains of consciousness entering your reality. And it was, in a sense, a bleed through from another dimension of consciousness. And more shall become clear with time. Relax into the understanding that all things occur with perfect timing 
and the unfolding and the understanding of what this connected to will become clear with time. All right. Okay, thank you very much. Um, there's a question and I don't, because it doesn't make clear sense to me, but it's from Kaina Alem and she says, have we to wait some natural disaster? I, I guess that means that maybe will there be a natural disaster for the month of December and how do we avoid it? And I guess if there is a natural disaster, what would it be? Well, we suggest the best way to avoid it is do not focus upon it for you create your own reality, yes? We suggest focus to the best of your ability on that which you prefer. And while there will be as you shift into this new world, likely some tremors, likely some bumpy situations as the polarized consciousness harmonizes into the idea of oneness and unity and is reflected in your outer reality. We suggest you do not dwell on these ideas. We suggest you focus upon the love and the light, that which brings you inspiration and joy and creativity in any given moment and focus in this realm, and this will enable the smoothing out of any bumps that you need to go through in the most efficient manner. Thank you. Are there any other questions in the room? Uh, we have a couple of people that haven't uh, asked any questions. Lana, do you have a question? Do you have any questions? Go ahead, please. Can you unmute your mic? Hello? There she goes. There you go. Is that better? Okay, good. Um, well, my question is um, sometimes when people feel like they're making a breakthrough, for me, for, for instance, um, I feel like I'm making headway, then another layer is uncovered and another layer and another layer. Um, I'm wondering if I'm... Yes, this, is, this is the headway. When, when you feel like you're making this and then you uncover the layer this is the headway oh, that's good i want to make sure i'm making progress yes yes you know you are making progress when you are uncovering more layers and in a sense you will always be uncovering more layers deeper clarity deeper unification with source consciousness there will always be more layers to uncover the layers become more joyful the layers become more freeing and the layers become more challenging and exciting and expansive so yes if you are uncovering more layers you are definitely making progress thank you so much thank you Shiva. thank you um anya has this question she says the il are supposed to be the first ones to have open contact with humanity. Are you the one that will do that? And if, and when is it possible? Me specifically? Or our collective consciousness? I, I think, I, I, she says, are you the one, but specifically maybe the race or maybe you? That's the, <laughs> I don't know. We will be the but, first, uh, we will be the first of the hybrid races. We perceive the timelines at present we will not be the first they will be others more, more directly related she just clarified she like. said the yael specifically just be, just to know there's a little delay in their chat versus the live recording so of the hybrid races these and humans we will not at present be the first extraterrestrial race there will be others connections to your historical past that come first okay and the question was when when well that's the big question isn't it yes why don't you just land on the white house lawn <laughs> when you're ready earth humans yes. when you're ready when you've let go of all, all that baggage, beliefs that no longer belongs to you, 
Let go of all those ideas that you have to do things you do not prefer. When you're ready, when you're ready, we will be there. It's up to you, Earth humans. It's up to you. You've got to do your bit. We're coming. We will be here. This timeline, physical contact will be occurring in the relative near future. Your parts. You're not ready yet. But if you were ready, we would be here now. And how are you not, you not ready? You're not home. You're not being yourself. There's no one home for us to come to see. You're trapped in your minds. You're trapped in your belief systems that are telling you you have to be someone you're not. You're not worthy of unconditional love. They're telling you you are not worthy of who you desire to be. You have to let go of all this baggage. You have to drop all this karma. You have to drop all this incongruent, discordant thinking. And as you come to align yourselves with the understanding that you are perfect beings, that you are worthy of the unconditional love that the Creator bestows upon you, that you are worthy of everything you desire, and you can live your highest excitement, you can live your dreams moment to moment with effortlessly, with the effortless flow of creation. And from this place, you harmonize, you become who you are, you rest into the present moment, now awareness of understanding that you are all of existence, coexisting here and now. As you come into this understanding of your divine heritage, have you come into this understanding of unconditional for yourselves and other beings? As you come into this alignment with your purpose, your calling and your highest excitement, and you let go of your fears about what may happen to you, and you see that you are the one infinite creator in four, and you are untouchable, you are immutable, you are immortal, from this knowing, from this place, from this aligned state of being, we will be there in your reality in a flash. Thank you. Just just again to go through, a, a, there's a clarifying question um, again from Anya. She's saying, and I don't know if this is, if you've already answered this part of the question, but um, you had said that the Yaya were the first hybrid race that would um, interact, but not necessarily the first race. And the first race would be other uh, beings that have been directly involved in our earth history. Is that correct? And her question is then, who is it that's going to be first? I believe that's what she's saying, that will contact us. The very, I guess the first first, not the first hybrid, but the first of the first. We will say, without wanting to spoil the surprise, that's two of these civilizations that have most connections to your past are those of Sirius and those of the Pleiades. Okay, we'll, we'll have to wait and find out that who it will be. Yes. Um, we Kemi has a question for you. <laughs> okay, perfect. Uh, Kemi has a question and um, and and actually just to go back one second within our chat, um, Alex had asked, is it going to be inner earth people that will actually um, be the first contact more than maybe extra terrestrial, more inner earth beings, or could they be inner earth beings? There will be connections with these dimensional entities that will coincide and harmonize and synchronize with extraterrestrial contact as it occurs. Okay. And then Kemi has a question. She said, please describe the relationship, influence, and interactions between Yael individuals and yourself. Between Yael individuals and me? Well, I, I think it means, I think it's more in the daily life of the Yael. What would be uh, the, what are the relation, or, or maybe between you and the channel, the relationships, the influences, and interactions? That's the question. Maybe she can type some a little bit more clear her question. All right. Well, to answer the first perspective of the question, the idea is that we follow our excitement moment to moment without hesitation. As a species, we interact with what being we need to interact with synchronistically, depending on our vibrational frequency in any given moment, in any given day. But the idea is that 
as we follow our excitement moment to moment without expectation, without hesitation in the understanding that we are supported by creation, so we need to have no fear about doing so. We harmonize our resonant frequencies, attract to us those beings that are also on similar paths, on similar frequencies. So those beings that are relevant for us to connect with are naturally there. We harmonize synchronicity, the magic of synchronicity, the unknowable, unknown ways in which synchronicity works. Allow us to harmonize, allow us to synchronize with those beings that are relevant for us. So these actions, interactions occur naturally through our resonant vibrations, causing synchronicity to create realities in which we co-create and come together with those beings in our reality that are relevant for us in the moment. Whether it be assisting humans with channeled messages, whether it be experiencing short excursions to Earth for the experience of exploring the idea of integrating with your reality, whether it be merely making music, relaxing in our nature that exists on our ships, our natural biosystems we have created within our ship, or exploring a multitude of ideas that excite us, we synchronize effortlessly with those beings that are of a similar like vibration, those beings that are also excited to explore similar ideas, we naturally synchronize together. So is this what she was questioning? She didn't, she didn't clarify. All right. Oh, oh, no, yes. No, she, she, no, said she, she said the relationship, excuse me. She said, she said the relationship of the collective mind to individual minds. I don't know if that's a question. You guys in the chat, you really have to make full questions <laughs> because this is just a statement. All right. Well, it, so well, it, I, let me just you know, let me read the whole question again. Please describe the relationship, influence, and interactions between Yael individuals and yourself. The relationship of collective minds and individual minds. All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Well, we may share with you a little of how the channel perceives this transmission, this connection, and it will give you an idea. It will tap you into some idea of how our collective mind operates. The idea that the channel tends to channel as a collective. It tends to be a collective channeling energy that comes through. We speak as a collective. However, there are individuals that come forth within us as a collective, and I am speaking, I am an individual, speaking as the collective. And from time to time, the channel will come more from the perspective of the collective or bring through generic information that is very deeply steeped within our collective consciousness, understandings that are germane to the way we operate. And they will come more from a collective aspect. However, they will be transmitted through an individual such as myself. But also at the same time, when certain questions come through, such as a question about first contact, a question about channeling, a question about emotional healing, a question about grounding and following excitement. There are beings within our collective consciousness that have an excitement to explore these ideas more than others. And so that being will come to the fore. So we operate in a sense as a hive mind. We operate as a one. We are always operating as one. But there are beings that come forth into our collective consciousness and into your reality and into your domain that will share their perspective, their individual perspective that they have garnered through their own exploration, their own sentient individuated exploration of consciousness and can share a slightly different perspective than is held within the collective consciousness of our civilization as a core collective imprint. So does this help? Does this answer the question somewhat? Yes, and then there was a question that as you are an individual speaking for the collective, is there a name that you have or that we can know? Yes, yes. I am known as Tahini Ra. And are you male or female? A male. Okay. Perfect. Th that was the question. And just just uh, there's one last question, and we're really at the top of the at the top of the hour, but if you're willing, I'll ask the one last question. We are here good. The channel okay. is a little tired, but we are always good. Perfect. Okay. You proceed. This will be the last question. Um, Anya has asked, since you're from the future, 
Do you have a physical body and can you please describe it? Thank you. Yes, we have a physical body. We are about three and a half feet tall. Hi, I'm about three and a half feet tall. I have somewhat spindly legs and arms, as you may call it in your reality. However, they are very strong. I have a very slim body, very slim at the waist, slightly higher at the chest, wider at the chest, similar to your humans, except thinner. I have what you would call a large head for your world, for your reality. My eyes are much bigger than yours. However, I do have irises and pupils that are bigger. I look somewhat like a cross between the channel and a gray zeta would be a good way to experience, to explain. Being a counterpart of the channel, we contain similar features. I have a small mouth, small ears, small nose, large eyes, large head, forehead, and in some way, you could say I am slightly cartoon-like. I look a little less physical, a little more multidimensional than you humans as a reflection of my more multidimensional consciousness. We hope this helps. We hope you have enjoyed this transmission at this time. We have loved, we have enjoyed, we have been excited in sharing our perspective of creation, our portal, our view of the one infinite creator of all that is, our view, our corner of creation with your world, with your dimension. We hope you have enjoyed as much as we have enjoyed this transmission. We thank you for being part of this co-creation. We thank you for exploring your own excitements in coming forth in this transmission and offering up your own questions, your own desires to become more of who you are, your own desires to unearth more of your true nature, your true consciousness, your true being. For this is in itself a huge service to creation, showing other beings on your planet, showing other beings in your realm, in your existence, and in many multidimensional realities tapping in on this call. That they can do too, can do the same. They can ask the questions that will create the answer. For the answer creates the question, and the question creates the answer, and they are one and the same. And they are birthed out of an understanding that you are the infinite creator, you are the infinite consciousness, you are tapped into all realms of all awareness at all times. And these portals, these gateways, these dimensional access points into the crystal grid of creation are available to you all in the here and now because they are you coexisting as you here and now in this moment. And as you tap into this energy, this understanding that all of creation exists here and now as you in this moment, as you rest into this moment, rest into this vibrational field of presence, into the knowing and understanding that there is this only one moment in creation. There is nothing outside of this moment. This moment is you and all of creation coexists here and now as you, as you rest into this presence, rest into this state of awareness, consciousness awareness, that this present moment is you. This is it, this is you. Hello, congratulations. You found yourself, the you you have been looking for, the enlightenment, the awakening you have been seeking is you, here, now. This is it. Hello, congratulations. And from resting into this presence, this understanding that what you have been seeking is you all along, you can begin to sense into the idea that the true you, the ultimate you, the multidimensional you, also coexists here and now as you. And by tapping into this frequency, tapping into this dimensional awareness, you begin, can begin to tap into these doubt realms of existence. You can begin to tap into these realms of consciousness that can allow the downloading, the accessing of greater aspects of who you are, tuning into more of your excitement, more of how you create in this reality, more of the potential that exists within you. And the potential that exists within you is infinite, for you are the infinite creators of your own realm. And what is relevant for you will birth in this reality if you believe it will birth in this reality. So trust and believe and know that you are infinite creation, 
You are the creators of your reality. All of creation exists here and now as you, within you. And this reality you experience in this moment, the human existence portal of creation, the human being you experience yourself to be as now, exists within your greater consciousness. And all things you exist, exist within you. All is in within you. And this knowing, this understanding that all exists within you unlocks the potential to create any reality you wish. For if you are God, if you are the creator, what is holding you back from creating what you desire? And as you rest into this understanding that what is relevant for your reality, what is relevant for your reality is your excitement, is your excitement. And the very fact that you know that you're excited shows you that it is relevant and shows you that it is possible. So know you are infinitely worthy of unconditional love. Know you are infinitely worthy of all things you desire and come to see yourself with the love and the gratitude and the wisdom and the knowing and the understanding that you are perfect beings that we view you with. And with this transmission, we will say, until the next time, Shivai, we love you so much, Earth humans. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye for, Goodbye now. for now. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And namaste to you. Welcome back. Hi. Hi. That was lovely. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Thank you. <laughs> so, Jonathan, just um, if do you have anything coming up in the near future? Do you have something, or you have a lot of things you're doing? You're teaching classes, and you have your website. Why don't you give us uh, all of that again, so people can get in touch with you for private reading and for uh, or for learning to channel or any of the other things that you're doing? Yeah, I don't think I've got any events or courses uh, coming up at the minute, but I always teach one to one. Um, if you go to my website, jonathancmartin.com, J-O-N-A-T-H-A-N-C-M-A-R-T-I-N.com, I teach channeling one-to-one, -one. I channel the Yael one-to-one, -one. and I also do like what I call I channel your guide sessions. So if you want me to tap into your own guide or you have a specific entity that you wish to connect with, there's a very good chance I can connect with that entity and channel them for you. And so, yes, yeah, so check out my website. And if you if you like to learn to channel, I love teaching people to channel. That is one of my passions. And I do one to one uh, teach channel, learn to channel sessions. And we have some very good successful rates. The majority of the people that I've taught channeling to have actually channeled on the first occasion to some extent. So it's not guaranteed. Beautiful. It's up to you, it's your beliefs. But if you wish to learn to channel or want a private channeling session, check out my website. Well, thank you so very much for that. And just uh, just to give a couple more announcements, and this has been Jonathan uh, C. Martin, who's been with us today. Um, the Hukalo, uh second get together, the Ascension Workshop is coming up on February 1st through the 6th. They are, have a holiday special right now that if you uh, pay $278 now, then you can reserve your spot and the other $278 is not due until the first day of the workshop. It's in Sedona, Arizona. They will be doing channeling sessions. Jonathan will be there. Um, Jim and Max will be teaching Galactic Reiki. Uh, Takur will be there. Grendel and all of the beings that you've been seeing all this time in Human Colony. So go to hukalo.org and you can register for the event. Also, if you'd like to become a member of Human Colony, you can go also to Hukalo hukalo.org and for ten dollars a month you can guarantee your spot in the room during jim's channelings and you have access to all of our different events uh, me personally i have two events coming up on the 21st of december here in the netherlands it will take place in the hague which is my uh, town where i live together with louise k we're going to be doing a channeling um, event together and we're going to be doing it in a person's home in the living room. We have a place for about 25 people, but if you want to find out about that, go to louisek.net. 
And then also on the 30th of December, which is Christmas, or excuse me, New Year's Eve Eve, um, I'll be taking part in the channel panel in Burbank, California. So if you're going to be in Burbank or you can get to Burbank, please go. There will be a vast array of channelers, including myself, Daryl Anka, uh, channeling Bashar, Rob Gothier, channeling Treb and the many entities he's channeling, Daniel Scranton, Sean Swanson, Nora Harold, Wendy Kennedy, Lee Harris, and I believe, and Kalina Angel. There, there's uh, so many people. So they'll all be there. It'll be an event not to be missed. So you can go to thechannelpanel.com. And then next week we have Jim. He'll be back. He'll be channeling. So please tune in. And until then, namaste and much love to everyone. And thank you very much. much. Thank you. And Jonathan, it was really wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, yes, once, once again, again, thank, thank you, you to Jonathan. Jonathan. And thank you, Karen, too. <laughs> thank, thank you. you. <laughs> All right. All right.